Hi folks, my name is Matthew Harrison. I'm a senior scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture. In this webinar we'll be looking at pivot tables in Excel. What are pivot tables? Why would you use them? And, why, uh, and some of the errors and problems that you might get when trying to create a pivot table. So this is just a data set that I've copied from uh, one of my other models. It doesn't really matter. It's just You can just have a table. You could have a much smaller table. You could have a larger table. I just wanted to il illustrate one of the problems that you might have. So one thing that, that pivot tables don't like is a space between the title and the data, or and they don't like a, a secondary title or a subtitle. So the best thing to do is actually delete that row, and the other thing to do is to ensure that the titles of each column are different. In the same way as if you've got two blank columns, it will throw an error. So just by way of example, I'll try to create a pivot table and show you what happens. To create a pivot table, click click within your data, it doesn't really matter where, go to insert, go to create a pivot table, then it's coming up with this create pivot table wizard, now it's saying this is the range that I'm going to select and you can see that dotted line on the outside, now it's saying do you want to create a new web new worksheet for your pivot table or within an existing one, let's just go within existing so you can actually compare where the data's come from, now it's asking for the location, hit this button here, Scroll across to a nice clean part of your worksheet. Now pivot table's got a bit that sticks out the top, so I always click down a bit, click over here, uh, hit return, and then hit OK. Now it comes up with this error, pivot table field name is not valid. To create a, to create a pivot table report you need to use data that's organised with a list of labelled columns. So what that means is some of my columns are not labelled and it doesn't like the subtitles. So go back here, hit cancel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of uh, this row here of subtitles. Just right click, delete. Uh, and then we go, we have some titles over here, some columns that aren't labelled. We might just reduce the size of that. It doesn't, the data doesn't really matter, it's just by way of example. We also have some labels I suspect that are the same, but uh, we'll see what pivot table says. It'll, it'll throw an error if it's wrong. Now. I have some columns here that are that are blank or not labelled, so we just need to. So I'm just going to get rid of these. You might choose to label them if it's important data. We'll just get rid of those. Right click and delete. Now uh, we just click in there anywhere. It doesn't matter where. Hit pivot table again. Existing worksheet. Uh, the location. We'll put it over here in a nice clean space. OK, hit OK, and it's and up comes the pivot table, and it's blank. So there's a number of ways you can you can uh, manipulate a pivot table. I like to use the old classic format, uh, a little bit old fashioned. So you just right click, go to pivot table options, go to display, classic pivot table layout. I find it's easier to use. You go OK, and now it comes up with this other format, and it tells you specifically where to drop them, where to drop the fields, and I find that more useful. So we have filters here, columns, rows, and values. Values will go in there. So if you want, for example, daily photosynthetic radiation, or this the data in a specific column, you want it to appear summarised, you put it in this field here. Then you think about your column titles up here, and then your row fields down here. And probably most importantly is this filters one, and we'll look at that last. So what have we got here? So we have days, and, and you might say, okay, well, I want to see, let's have a think about this. I want to see the average maximum air temperature for each year. So I've got data here from 1973 through to, okay, I've only got 1973. Well, let's just say I want to see the average monthly temperature. So I've got every month for 1973. Let's say I want to see the average maximum air temperature for each month. So what I'll do is I'll go over here to my pivot table. If you don't click in it, it goes into this white box, so you can sort of forget that it's there. Go over here to month, grab your month. There's two ways you can do it. You can drop it, drag it and drop it over in here, and it's see how it's going green? It's going to appear in that green area. I find that easier. Or you can actually put it down in here as well. Same thing. I like to put it in here. If you drop it in there... It's saying, OK, these are the independent months I found in your column. So it's finding an independent number. Uh, it has this grand total thing. In this case, it's not useful. Just right-click, remove grand total. 
Now all we want is the average maximum air temperature for the month. So we get average, we get maximum temperature, we get it, and then we drop it in here. And so what that's doing, it's telling us up here, is the sum of maximum air temperature. We don't want the sum, we want the average. So you double click on there, and it comes up with the options. Summarize values by these options here, sum, count, average, so on. We want average. You also have other ones like standard deviation. Hit average. Now it's showing me that the average air temperature for the first month for January is 7.72. The average temperature for April is 10.8. So it's very, very useful. It summarized all of those values and the note, you know that the value that you got is correct. Then you might say, well, what about minimum air temperature? How do I do that? Well, you grab it, come over here, and then you drop it. When it highlights in that, in that box there, it actually appears. So it's coming up with the sum again. Double click on it. Go average. And there's the average minimum temperature. Now you might say, what about the sum of rainfall for each month? And the reason that we don't want average rainfall is because it's usually in a in a, an agronomic scenario, you're more interested in total rainfall. So you go over here again when that green box appears, pop it in there, and then it's coming up with the sum of the rainfall for the month. So really quite useful. Now you might say uh, well, that's all very interesting, but I only really want the the month of um, of January. I don't really want any other month, and I want what other have we got here? I want all of the days in January. I don't I don't want uh, I want all of the days in January. I don't want any other month. So how would I do that? So to add another another label of columns, there you grab the the column the data variable that you want. In the same way that you, if you put it in there, you can actually see what happens if you put it in there, it'll turn out to be a mess. And it's coming up with the sum of the days in each month. Not particularly useful. And to get rid of it, you just uncheck it over here, and it disappears again. So bring it over here, and then you get this funny looking uh, eye symbol, and it can, uh, you, can, uh, you can drop it wherever you like. You'll often make a few mistakes, but if it doesn't turn out to be the right way, you just pick it up and drop it in another spot. So try it over here, put it over there. So what's it doing now? It's actually showing, well, here's the first month. It's showing all of the days in the first month, so 1 to 31 in January. Then it's showing the subtotal for the month, which may or may not be useful to you. In my case, not useful. So I'm going to right-click, get rid of subtotal for the month. Got rid of it. That's fine. And that's all very well. That's really all I want. I don't want February, March, April, May. In fact, all of that is superfluous. How do I get rid of that? So what I might do is I'll go up here and we have this option filter. So we uncheck, so that means it's selecting none. And we just hit one, hit OK, and it all disappears. And then you've got your daily values for the month. So you've got maximum, minimum, sum of rainfall, and so on. So in that way, you can actually filter what you want, and when it's actually been filtered, you can see this funny symbol pop up up here. Then you might say, well, actually, I want the first and the fifth month. I don't want anything else, so I can I can click this one here, and the fifth month will now pop up in that table. Now, a tricky thing is with trying to copy data from a, a pivot table, uh, it can get a little bit touchy, or if you're using pivot table information to create formulas in other cells, it can also get a little bit touchy. So what I, often I do is I just say it equals that number there. Uh, and then I just copy those data over here, just in this way. So this is only if I'm going to copy this information or use the data in these cells to, to do other calculations within the spreadsheet. If you only want to use the data in the spreadsheet, that's fine. Uh, and then you just, and then you can fill down. So it's going to, it's essentially copying all of the data that I have in the spreadsheet here. Then you can then do your calculations on these cells here. So that one equals, you know, you whatever, whatever, whatever your calculation might be. So times eight, so on and so forth. Uh, and then you, in that way, you create your calculations, and it's not stuffed up by the the get pivot table data when you actually try to get the information from the pivot table. So I won't go into the post pivot table calculations too much. Uh, so that's some basic manipulations of a pivot table. There's other things that you can do. So if you actually look at the information down here 
uh, it's actually quite interesting how you can play with these information. You can, for example, move them from, you know, you might not want, uh, you know, the the actual sum of the rainfall as a value. You might want the sum of the rainfall as to create a chart. So you might say, okay, well, can I bin the values? Can I create categories of the values and put them into rows? You can. Uh, if you grab the values over here and you put them in there, they'll actually appear now in as categories within the rows. That's probably not a very good example, but in that way you can move them out of your values, out of the summary area to being categories. So I'm just going to put them back in there for simplicity. And then you might say, well, that's useful, but it's very hard to interpret. So how, how would I create a graph out of that? So for a pivot chart, you just click in your pivot table, go up here to this pivot table analyze button. Uh, you then go to design rather, back to pivot table analyze. Uh, and so you've got all of these options in here. So you've got things like slices, uh, changing of data source. One thing that is very useful is to remember to refresh your data every time you start it up. Uh, so if you if you change some of your information here, if you go back here and, and for example, uh, you change, let's just say, for example, we come back here and for some reason one of these numbers has changed. Just so that we can pick it out, we're going to say a 1,000 degree day. Obviously not realistic, but I just want, want to demonstrate what's going to happen here. And you can see that on the third day of the month, it's still got that 10.5 value. So to fix that, you just go up here, pivot table, analyze, hit refresh. Now you can see that it's picked up that 1,000 value. Every time you close and open Excel, it will also refresh. If you've got multiple pivot tables, click on this and hit refresh all, and it will update them all. So I'm going to put this back to 10.5, and then it will it should pick that up again. Refresh. Now, what happens if I want to plot that? Well, we click in the pivot table, we go to insert, uh, and it's saying pivot table is greyed out. We can't create another pivot table within our pivot table, which is fair enough. Pivot chart, this is probably what we want. Click in there. It's giving us another number of options. So you could have a, a pivot table stacked chart, you could have a clustered column, you could have a 100% stacked column, so it always adds up to 100%. 3D, I don't find particularly useful, but it's there if you if you want to have a look at it. Stacked chart, then you might say, well, what about a pie chart? Uh, a line chart, so you can either have a line chart with the points or without the points. Uh, you can have it as a, a, a stick line or a smooth line. Uh, we've got a number of different other examples here, so we'll just so if you if you actually mouse over there, it's going to give you a blown up example of how it's going to look. You can see that the x-axis there is not particularly meaningful. Uh, so let's just go back to column here. Uh, this x-axis is also not meaningful, and that's probably because of the categories that we've used. We'll go back here to the line graph. Okay, hit OK, and then we have our graph. So. As always, you never usually get this right in the first case. It takes a little bit to manipulate it, uh, so to get the data that you want. So if you if you think about what it's actually plotting, I've got the first month and the fifth month, and then it's saying, okay, here's your first month. There's all the days. And here's the fifth month. It does this compressive axis thing, so it's it's showing every second value. If you stretch it out, most likely those values will appear. So it's got an auto labeling thing. What is it actually showing you? It's showing you the average maximum temperature and the average minimum temperature, as well as the sum of rainfall. Now, something that I'm just going to have a play around with is you might say, well, you know, I don't want, it's not particularly easy to understand if rainfall is in a line format there. I really want rainfall as a bar chart. It's useful to have the lines for temperature, but not so much for rainfall because I want to see what the daily amounts of rainfall are in bar format form. So right click on this bar, go to change chart series type. So it's asking, it's saying we want a combination and it's saying all of these types of lines, we don't actually want a line, we now want a column. We hit column for sum of rainfall. Do we want it on a secondary axis? Yes, we do. So it's going to plot it on, on the right axis. It should plot it on the right axis, but what it's doing is it's plotting it underneath, which is a little bit difficult to understand. So to fix that, uh, it, this is just due to Excel's auto uh, auto reformatting of the axis. We want to make the minimum zero. Yep, 
that's fine. We want to make this minimum zero as well. Format axis, minimum is zero, so that's fine. So now it's on the on the secondary axis or the right axis it's got rainfall. On the on the left axis it's plotting temperature. And so therefore we have our plots. Now if you update anything in the pivot table or if you even update anything in your data for example so let's just go back here we've got rainfall just to make it easy let's say we had a big rainfall event on the first day we had a hundred millimeters okay and for some reason that changed so we go back here now we go back to our pivot chart we hit refresh now you see not only the initial value of the rainfall increases, but the pivot chart updates as well, so you can see that initial value. So in that way, you can play with pivot charts. A useful function is the formatting's done. So the sum is done, the average is done. It's also got many other variables that you can play with in there. So let's say, for example, uh, that you want to add something else. The other thing to remember is that when a pivot table expands, if you have any data in here, uh, it's going to give you a warning, I'm going to overwrite that data because it wants to automatically add another column out here. So if I go out here and let's just say I want to add add wind, but I want to add the the standard deviation of wind or solar radiation. It doesn't really matter what your variable is. And now it's saying, oops, you've already got data out here in this column. Do you want to replace it? So it's useful that it gives you that warning. In this case, I do. And now our pivot, our pivot chart has changed, and the reason for that is because we have this new data source in there. So we have to go back and update our pivot chart. Now, we don't want the sum of radiation. I, I just wanted to demonstrate some of the other computations that it does. So, for example, this is variance. The square root of variance is standard deviation. We go to standard deviation. Now, the reason that it says it's saying divided by zero means that it's only got one value. So usually you'd have a pivot table to do a computation on several values in this case i've got individual values so a standard deviation is not particularly useful so we might say okay what about if we had let's just remove standard solar radiation now the pivot table should go back again let's just say we had wind uh, and we're interested in the windiest day the windiest day so actually that won't work because I've got the individual values but just by way of example if we if we go back here grab this wind drop it in the table it's coming up with the sum of the wind if now we don't want to look at the individual values let's just remove this remove this filter select all that's fine now the pivot table is going to is going to plot every single value you can see it updating there which looks rather messy we don't want the daily values, so we come back here, we just check this value here. Now what it's doing is it's, plant, it's plotting a monthly average value, so it's using all of the values within the month. Now, it, because of the autom automatic reformat function in pivot tables, it will always update when you make a change here. So we just go back here, we can go to, um, we can actually click on this data here, right click change chart series type now what we want is we want maximum and minimum temperature to be lines which i think is better sum of rainfall can be a column S uh, that rainfall can be uh, on a secondary axis so it's going to look like that that's going to actually look quite messy let's have a look at what happens if we put wind on the secondary axis that's actually quite intuitive so we can actually understand what it means so i think that's fine if we hit ok now what this is showing is it's showing that we've plotted these two variables on the left axis and these two variables on the secondary axis or the right axis so we can see that the average minimum temperature and the average maximum temperature the same as the sum of rainfall and the sum of wind for the month so as i said before we might actually want to see what the maximum the, the most windiest day of each month is so double click hit the max now what it's showing is it's it's saying okay well the the actual okay so it's doing the sum of the rainfall and the mac in the most windiest day so that's not particularly useful because it's on the it's on the wrong axis so just to make this easy let's get rid of uh, this chart is actually quite busy now so let's maybe right click on this 
select data. Now what happens if we want to get rid of data? So there's a couple of ways you can get rid of data. You can actually click on it, hit delete, and it disappears. Uh, now what we have here is sum of rainfall. I just clicked on it and deleted. Uh, and it's automatically doing this reformatting function. So you can go right click, select data is another way to do it. You can click on it and depends on whether you want to remove it or not. You can reformat it or you can do it, you can plot it in a different way. Because these maximum wind values are, are plotted on the same axis as this uh, is plotted on the, the same primary axis, it's quite difficult to understand. So what we might do is we might get rid of rainfall. So we just uncheck this value here. That's easier to understand. To make it even easier, we right click, put it on the secondary axis, maximum of wind. Actually, if we were right click here, change chart series type, secondary axis, yes. And we have our maximum wind speed now displayed on the secondary axis. And so you can see what the maximum wind speed was for each month. So that's just a demonstration. It shows you a, a brief overview of, overview of what a pivot table is as well as a pivot chart, what happens when you update them and some of the initial problems that you might get with column labels. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this webinar.